everybody loves carrots, or at least they should, because they've got a lot of vitamin A in them. And they're really easy to grow. Honestly, they are. And you can grow them in any state of the country. The real secret, though, is your soil. But that's why they're so easy to grow in a square foot garden, because you've improved your soil. Now, when should you plant seeds? Okay, let's again look at another chart here, a spring planting chart. We can see that they're usually put in in early spring. That means zero to four weeks before the last spring frost. It tells you when to plant them. But, you know, carrots can be planted all spring, all summer, and right into the fall. In fact, the fall crop is the best. There's a chart in here for fall planting. Let's look at that. Carrots should be planted about 10 weeks before your last frost. And you know how to look up your frost date in one of the maps in the book. Well, I want to show you, too, how you're going to get 16 perfect carrots out of this square foot. Because as soon as they sprout, then you want to take a scissors or some clippers like this, and you want to clip out all the extra sprouts and leave just one in every space. That's so simple and easy to do. I don't know why people haven't been doing that for years. The old method of thinning just doesn't work because it disturbs the plant you want to save. So just clip off the extra ones and leave 16 in your square foot. Now some of the problems that people talk about with carrots is, why are my carrots stumpy or stunted or forked? Why do they come up misshaped? Well, it's usually because of the soil. Or it could possibly be because of you added manure. You organic gardeners, don't add manure to your soil before you plant carrots. That causes misshaped roots. And you have to have a well-dug, deep soil. Now, if you're going to go for the long carrots, you know, the eight or nine inch ones, then your soil has to be loose that deep. And here's a suggestion. Take just one square foot in your garden. That's not hard. It's only that big. Dig it down at least 10 inches deep. Take out all the soil and then replace that with the perfect soil. Before you put that perfect soil mix in, dig around in your natural soil and loosen it up. Then fill the whole square foot in with perfect soil mix and you'll have no trouble at all growing carrots. Now when you get them to sprout, sometimes, remember, it takes a long time. You want to cover that square foot with some plastic so it keeps the moisture in or a mulch mat, something like that and this will help hold the moisture in. You're going to have to keep that soil moist, otherwise those seeds won't sprout. Well, it's really very easy to grow carrots, and for those that want a lot of carrots, I've included also a chart in the book that shows you, if you want to freeze or can, how to have an, a lot, I mean a really lot of carrots. Here's a chart here that shows you how you'd plant an entire block, that's four feet by four feet, with carrots, and you'll harvest 256 carrots from that one block. Now, you're going to have to like a lot of carrots to have that many. What are the other problems with carrots? There's really very few, except when they first sprout, you're going to have lots of little critters want to eat them, from cutworms to rabbits. So you might want to put in a cutworm collar, or you might want to cover that square or that block with some chicken wire to keep out rabbits or deer or woodchuck. As far as disease, they're almost disease resistant. Really are a good vegetable for your square foot garden. Well, I got some great letters to share with you today. First one is from Cincinnati, Ohio, from Mark Coring. And he and his wife grow on their balcony, uh, but they say we've got a problem with green leaf caterpillars eating all the buds. What can we do next year to outsmart those little devils? Well, it's really very easy, Mark. You hand pet them off, but you've got to look for them because they're the same color as the leaf, and they're hard to see. Now, if you want to... If you don't want to hand pick, then you can spray with a substance called BT. That's the ingredient. When you go to the store, ask for something that contains BT. There are several trade names for it. And you spray once a week, and that'll keep those critters away from your good buds and your plants. The next one is from Ramona, California, and this is from Kathy Long. She says, my question is, does square foot gardening save water as well as space? We have lots of land here in Southern California, 
But water is so expensive. You bet it saves water. In fact, square foot gardening not only takes 80% less space, but it cuts down 80% of everything else, including water. And if you follow some of the tips I have in my book on how to plant and leave little depressions around each individual plant, and you water from a bucket with a cup, you're going to have so little requirements for water, and yet all the water goes right to your plants. So it's an added advantage to square foot gardening. Our next letter is from Imperial, Missouri. And if you think you have the worst soil, listen to this letter. This is from uh, Alvin Walsh, and he says, Our property in Jefferson County in Missouri, our soil in this area is the poorest in the world, almost. Our soil consists of flint rock and red brick clay with approximately one half inch of topsoil <laughs> in scattered areas. Imagine a half an inch. Well, that square foot garden is perfect, and part of it is mixing your own soil. Now, I've included in the book a chart that shows you exactly how to mix the perfect soil. And you don't need a lot of it, because remember, your garden is condensed into four foot by four foot planting areas. Basically, you need peat moss, vermiculite, possibly some sand, a little bit of charcoal, and you're going to need lots of organic material. And I'll also go into a little bit about fertilizer, both organic and non-organic, what you should mix in your soil. Now, let's see, our next letter comes to us from Austin, Texas, and this is from Barbara Griffith, and she has a couple questions. Number one, she has lots of huge trees in very hot conditions where she lives. Number two, she has no dirt. What can I do? Well, if you don't have any dirt, then go out and buy bags of prepared planting mix or mix your own according to the formula that I just mentioned. Next question is, what to plant under the trees? Nothing. Don't try and plant anything under trees. Nothing will grow. You're going to have trouble with competition from the tree roots and from the shade up above. So make sure your garden is out in a sunny area. Now, if you need any other garden tips, Send in for my free garden tips. All you have to do is send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. And I'll send you a pamphlet that shows you all the things you have to know to get started with a square foot garden. The spacing, the timing, when to plant, everything you need to know to begin a garden. Also, you'll get a listing of all the PBS stations around the country where the show is on. And you can write and tell your relatives about the show if they're interested in gardening. And I'll also include a free packet of seeds some flower seeds, some marigolds, so you can start off with a pretty garden. Now, to get that, all you have to do is send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, a business size envelope, please, and put your name and address on it and a stamp and send that to this address, Square Foot Gardening, Georgetown, Connecticut, 06829. That's Georgetown, Connecticut, 06829. Do it today. Our next letter is from... Cambridge, Minnesota, from Christine Nolan. She says, the thing that I'm worried about is, will square foot gardening work in Minnesota? You bet it will. It'll work anywhere in any state of the country. In fact, the worse your soil or the worse that your weather is, the better square foot gardening will work for you. So if you don't have a garden, get started with one in 